in this video we will quickly check what is an inter-process communication called IPC we will see what is it we will see why is it used we will see what are the different types of IPCs that we have and then we are going to see what is the advantage and disadvantage of it or what are the pros and cons of it. We will also take one example to illustrate um, our point. Okay, so this will be a structure. What is it first? When we go into what is it, it is in Linux, an application can have more than one or more processes. A process will have what? Will have its own memory. This is one process. Another process will have its own memory, it will have its own code, its own memory, everything. Now, how do these two communicate? Now, this process can be on the same machines or they can be on the different machines. Right? One can be on the gateway, one can be on the on the edge node or they can be two different processes each process in Linux has its own um, memory which other processes will not be able to access directly the mechanism that helps you these to communicate is called inter-process communication there are different ways of achieving this ok so that is what it is if there are two different processes how do they communicate next we are coming to why why do we have this because sometimes the program needs to share some data for example it can, one can be server one can be client or two different programs need to communicate uh, between each other so it's a mechanism for communication and especially when the program gets bigger it becomes distributed when it becomes distributed you need some way in which these two have to communicate okay so that that is the reason why we uh, need inter-process communication okay it has its own now uh, so let us take an example if i take an example for example if you have a program even in a program for example there are some global variables etc which are shared with all the program it has access for all the functions for it you can have functions okay any variable that is stored within the function is very local to this function it cannot access global right even within a program you have this hierarchy of memory now like that if there are different processes if they have to communicate in what way will they communicate right they need to communicate so, uh, the different types that we have, for example, are one way I can make this communicate to processes is I can have some signals, for example. Signals is one way. We implement this is one way in which uh, I have signal. Signal means what? For example, I have a computer, I have keyboard. I can do control all delete, I can do power on, so it's a signal, so your program does something. When I do this switch off or when I do control all del, there is a signal that goes. So you're telling the computer, hey stop everything and attend to my signal. Now your operating system depending on the signal will pass it on to uh, the program and say hey you got something, you handle it. Or if it is very severe, it's going to uh, handle it itself. For example, uh, your word document is stuck, it's a program. Then you tell the computer he kill it so it takes and it takes some action it just kills the process so it, there are different types of signals there are a lot of signals in uh, and depending on the type of the signal what type of signal i invoke there will be signal handlers if i get the signal what to do for example if there is a divide by zero divide by zero is what infinity you get a huge memory what should I do at those stages so that other programs don't get affected? So there can be error conditions, there can be some user intervention that can happen. 
So to handle them, I handle them using signals. So signals are what? There is a type of signal and there is a handler for each of the signal which is registered in your OS. Okay? Handler. So I say if I get a signal, this is the signal handler, this is what you, you have to do. If I get this, what should I do? Basically. So signals is one way. What are the other ways in which processes can communicate? Is one is just the file. I can have a file, normal file, for example, a.txt, where this can refer and this can refer, right? That is another way, indirect way of communicating. So I can have files via files. I can communicate to process. Can communicate. Uh, that is that is one way. But what are the pros and cons of it? The pro is it's very simple to implement. The con is it's very it's going to be very slow. You want to have a disk access. It will be very slow. Then how will you maintain the synchronicity and all that? Synchronous. It will be very difficult, right? Now, what are the other types? So we saw A signal, B is using file. C, what I have is, I can use, for example, pipes. What are called pipes. Pipe is what I have a program, I have second program, I can create a pipe between them. Duplex or full duplex. Using pipe command, using pipes, the input of this can be written to the pipe. This program can read it from the uh, that pipe. So one will write, one will read. So I can use it using pipes. Okay, named pipes you call them. Second one, I can also, this is C. I can use pipes. D, I can use message queues. Okay, I can use message queues. For example, to communicate in message queue, what happens? There will be a queue that is created. You have a process, you have a second process, this writes to the queue. This can read from the queue. And the message, message queue I can create, it will have an ID, it will have a name, it will have what data will be written to it, etc, etc. It has a structure. Okay? So I can do it using message queues. Now what else, what are the other ways in which I can do? Um, now what are the uh, uh, disadvantages of them? So when you take all these things, there are other ways too in which I can do. For example, I can have a shared memory. Okay, SHM, shared memory. You can create a shared memory where the process can create a shared memory and say two processes can pass the ID and say, hey, this is shared for us. So you write to this, I write to this. I can use it using shared memory. I can use it, uh, write it using memory mapped memory so that at physical level itself I can map it. So there are different ways in which I'm going to, I have different options. Even in a way I can also have remote procedure calls, RPC it is called. Wherever distant, there is a way in which you do RPC. So there are different mechanisms in which I can use to communicate between processes. Now you would ask me, hey, how do I know how to use where? So for example, if you want to travel from A to B, you have different ways of transport. It depends on your choice, how much cost you are willing to pay, uh, where are you first, if there is a C, you cannot obviously take your car. So each of them have their pro pros and cons. So let us um, see what are those pros and cons. In the above discussion, when we discovered these things, okay, one of the main features, what is the main feature that you are going to look at? Let us just take the attributes. You may look at, hey, how fast, how fast do I want? Speed of execution will be important for you. That could be one. Second could be your size of message. Some of these procedures are very good for small messages. Some are good for very large number of messages. Third one is, how do you maintain um, atomicity? Means what? When, when one person is making an update, other person should not make an update. So if this person is writing, other process is reading at the same time. There will be inconsistency, right? How do you address them? Technically, you address them using semaphores or mutexes. 
okay, in, uh, in Linux. Just uh, terminology, semaphore and mutexes are nothing but you get fancy lock. You go to semaphore, if it is greater than uh, zero, it means, hey, I can go and write. If it is zero, it means, hey, somebody is using road So it's a, it's a nice lock that you have using semaphores, okay? Yeah, so coming back, you will see, does it also guarantee me atomicity? Means what, when I write, there will be no inconsistent read or write. When somebody is writing, I don't read, so that is inconsistent, right? So, speed is my consideration, size is my consideration, atomicity is my consideration. Okay, these are some of the factors that would determine what is that I am going to use for a particular application. Okay? Thank you.